everyone, or good afternoon, depending, or evening, or whatever it is, wherever you are in this beautiful world. I'm Ioni Butler, and I'm the founder of Uplifting Content. Now, this week marks Suicide Prevention Week. Um, today's guest, we're talking about hormone balance and the importance of that. But I will also do a little, little bit and touch on um, the Suicide Prevention Week stuff at the end of the conversation, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but without further ado, I love my guests to introduce themselves and uh, tell you their story before we get started. So today I'm speaking to the lovely Magdalena Shalaki, and I would love for her to repeat her, to introduce herself with her name, because I might not have said it completely correctly. But Magdalena, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. On a beautiful day like this, it's hard not to be well, right? Yes. Uh, when you're in sunny Boulder, Colorado. Uh, that's why you see the pine trees. That's why I'm, I'm back home, so that feels really good. Nice. Have you been traveling a lot? Yeah, I think you and I tried to connect. You were in Japan and I was in Sicily during that time, and which was really a great um, to take a break just to be, you know, in, in Sicily for a month just to be really reminded of how important it is to go back to the basics and, mm. and the reminder of really good quality food and the love for food and the earth and making organic food and organic wines and beautiful olive oils. That was just so rejuvenating. So, yeah. I think, I think shortly after you were in Sicily, I was in Chianti for, um, for an event and just the food. I love Italy for the food, for the people, for the weather, for the stunning, just everything. So yeah, yeah it's just nice to have that reset for sure. Um, so I'd love for you just to share with the audience your story, um, um, what, what got you to where you are today, and a little bit about the work that you do, so we got a bit of context. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, I, I write um, about the connection between food and hormones, right? And, you know, I'm going to probably catch myself talking a lot about women, uh, but it is, it is, guys have a problem too, but it's somehow more of a women's thing, or women, I think, I'm a little, a little bit more conscious of, of that. So, you know, I think the pivotal moment for me ha happened in 2008 when I was living in Shanghai in China and I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease based on the fact that I was uh, chronically fatigued. I started getting anxiety attacks, which I had never had in my life. And, you know, being a very real and grounded personality, suddenly to have these unrational fears um, and, and just, you know, having like uh, breakdowns at times from fear and anxiety was very unusual. And I remember going and seeing a doc, an endocrinologist, and she looked at my file, she flipped it, and she says, you're 36 years old. Um, it's no surprise you're getting tired. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, right? Good advice. <laughs> um, you know, so I was really lucky to be diagnosed really quickly because there are millions of women who go around every day being told by the doctor that they have no hormonal problems, right? You get mm -hmm. the lab work and, you, you know, based on symptoms, it's like, it's your age, exercise more, take this pill, uh, eat better, eat better, whatever that might mean, right? And, and that's it. So I was really lucky to be diagnosed really, really quickly. And it's, it was kind of a no surprise, really, because, um, you know, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease, really. It's, it's, it affects the thyroid, so it becomes an, a, a hormonal problem, but it really is an autoimmune disease. Um, and so I've had a history of autoimmunity already before, because guess what? Seven years before that, I had Graves' disease, which is not autoimmune disease, where you become hyperactive. So that's where, you know, you start getting sweaty hands and anxiety attacks and you, your heart palpitates. And as much as we like to tell stories from the time we were diagnosed, you know, I only, the, the truth of the matter is that I was born, like right from the day I was born, I wasn't probably given the best deck of cards, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, genetically, I'm super predispositioned to having a lot of issues with immunity, food intolerances, the way I'm clearing estrogen is really bad, uh, sensitivities to sulfur, just the list goes on. And having grown up with, you know, a mom who didn't, um, who bought into the 1970s concept um, from, uh, you know, milk, powder milk companies that, um, that that kind of milk was more nutritious than her own milk. And I was a firstborn baby. You know, she bought into this. I was never breastfed, not even for a day. And not surprisingly, you know, even as a young, young kid, I, I was covered in eczema. Uh, I had ear infections, sinus infections, chronic. I don't remember much as a five-year-old child, but I do remember being taken to the hospital for ear drainage because there was so much pus in the ears. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and, and a lot of times, like, what happens with sensitivity, so uh, I did not realize that mom didn't know about that either, that I had a severe sensitivity, food intolerances to gluten, dairy, and, and, um, and eggs, 
were really not my best friends. And a lot of, you know, not breastfed children, especially if you don't supplement it or fix it early enough, we always are going to have a compromised microflora, right? So our diversity of our gut bacteria is not as great as somebody, for example, who was a breastfed baby. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm talking about this is because that kind of stayed with me for life. But, you know, there's no reason to give it in and think of it as a, as a victim. I see this as just an opportunity to really learn more about ourselves and fixing all of that. And mm -hmm. I feel like the past, you know, the past 20 years I've been doing a lot of fixing. And um, so, yeah, so, you know, um, just I'll mention one more, one more thing because that happens to a lot of people. Whatever food sensitivities we have as a child with these kind of symptoms, oftentimes they evolve to something different in our young adult age. So for example, in my case, when I was in my 20s, I was covered in cystic acne, not just the face, but mm. my, my front, my back. I never owned a shirt like, you know, this is a shirt with an open back. I never owned a shirt with an open back because I was covered in zits. Mm. And that was, again, that was because of eggs and dairy that were causing these sensitivities, this constant inflammation that just manifests in form of uh, pimples, you know, and I tried every single herb and topical application and expensive skincare products, and none of that was working mm. until I changed my diet. So, you know, if you think about that, it was the diet, it was also working in advertising in chronic stress. I used to do strategic planning for an online advertising agency based in Asia. I actually grew up in Asia, I spent most of my life in Asia uh, from age 15. China? So, what's that? China as well? Yeah, Where so for me, um, no, so I grew up in Malaysia uh, from age 15 till I was um, I was in my 30s. Uh, there was I lived in Malaysia for 17 years, and then after that, I lived in Hong Kong and Shanghai for another four years between those two cities. Mm. So you know, it was it was very it was so dynamic. I mean, China was then growing like crazy, still is. You know, it was so ex so exciting to be part of that advertising world and getting these new accounts. But it also came at the cost of being always in airplanes and eating food out of hotel rooms and um, airports mm. um, and, you know, horrendous stress. And I remember my friends will always say, you know, like, I'm not going to ask you, how are you? I'm just going to ask you, where are you right now when I'm calling you? <laughs> and that was to them, it was very sexy. And for me, initially, it was great. But then you realize after a while, you know, your body takes a beating. Yeah. yeah. Your body takes a beating. And it's no wonder that when I was 36 years old, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Fast forward, changing my lifestyle, quitting the company, uh, setting up my own business, really being serious about nutrition, detoxifying the body, addressing a lot of um, you know stuff with meditation and just really slowing things down, changing my diet, obviously, uh, very, uh, very deeply, has brought me to a point today that as a 45-year-old woman, I feel better and I look better than when I was, in, when I was 25. Mm. You know? And that's really what I'm passionate about today. I'm a cookbook author. Um, I, I have a on, large online community um, of women who want to learn how to rebalance their hormones naturally, predominantly using nutrition, detoxification, a lot of self-love. Um, so, yeah, so that's the story. <laughs> it's a, I love it. Thank you for sharing. The, the importance of the nutrition, I love that you go with that angle um, and make it less about just taking supplements and more about rebalancing the hormones um, through eating the right thing. So, I know that diet, I mean, it, it boggles my mind that doctors spend so little time training in nutrition. It's like nothing as part of their training. And yet to me, it is the key thing in ensuring that we are healthy and preventing illnesses by eating the things that our bodies need and should be eating. So what is it that you typically notice in people um, when they come to, I mean, I guess there's all sorts of different problems, but I guess, so what are the, the most pressing ones? Um, and what is it the types of foods that we should be eating more of and avoiding that you sort of see often? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, um, so let's just maybe, um, so for our, um, should we ask questions to the listeners, uh, to the viewers? Yeah. Do you want to do that? Um, maybe we get to know like what kind of, um, what kind of hormonal imbalances are you guys suffering from? And um, so I can talk to those specifically uh, what they are. And the cool thing about a hormones, right, is that, well, let me just start off with the bad thing. The bad thing about a hormones is that there are so many things that impact them, right? There are these little chemical messengers that can be anything from genetic predispositions, which is not a sentence, just a predisposition to our lifestyle, to quality of sleep and stress and nutrition and you know whatever stuff that we carry from our parents, um, like um, you know abuse and stuff like that can all play into how our hormones manifest. The cool thing is that we can 
we can do so much to help ourselves. And that's the incredible thing. And, you know, and so whether, so, so here this, you guys, so whether it's you having a thyroid problem or you're having PCOS, you're going through perimenopause or you're having hot flashes or your PMS is from hell, it's, it's, it's something called estrogen dominance. So really, that's going to be my next book, Ioni, it's about estrogen dominance. You know, women with this, we did just have a um uh Kad Khadija was saying painful periods, um fibroids and hair loss. So yeah, I right. think, yeah, this will be helpful for her. Right, awesome. So, you know, so we can talk about specific specific hormonal imbalances in just a second, but like what she's mentioned, like the fibroids, the terrible PMS is that's that's a condition called estrogen dominance that can play a role. There's, you've got too much of those dirty estrogens, the way estrogens get broken down, there's too many of those dirty ones. But before I dive into like, you know, before going like too micro, just want to step back a little bit and share that the cool thing about hormones is that we can set up a foundation by doing a couple of things that can really set us up for great success. And so a lot of times we have this mentality, and I'm sure you appreciate that, like you mentioned supplements, we're like, oh, my PMS is terrible. Like, what's the one supplement I should take to change it, right? If I have a thyroid problem, what's the pill that I should take to, um, you know, to, to fix it, right? But here is the kicker. Um, when you, you kind of going back to the mentality of like medication, right? Like, I can't sleep, I take this mat. I don't want to get pregnant, I take a pill. I get anxiety, I take a pill. So don't do the same thing with food. When you set the foundation as like setting a foundation for a beautiful, strong house, like you don't need to, you know, worry about so much about what you build on top. You do, but you know, you, you, you're set, right, in your foundation. So the foundation for hormones is really the first one is like you mentioned about, you know, uh, what to remove. Let me start off with that first. It's anything that's highly inflammatory for us, and that impacts your gut. Um, and that inflammation, you know, especially food intolerances, it's something that when you address those foods that you are sensitive to, even though they could be seemingly healthy foods, these foods are, can be inflammatory, that can impact the way your glands are producing these hormones, how these hormones are then getting into the cells and how they are excreted. And so, you know, um, the, the big food items that are causing always a lot of inflammation that we know about very well, and you see this everywhere now, is gluten, right? It's dairy, unfortunately, and um, eggs can be for some people. Uh, but also, you know, even things like um, soy and uh, corn can be potentially also problematic for people. So eating foods that you know are hurting you is just like adding fuel to the fire. So yes, you can do a lot of supplements. You can do a lot of, you know, I can talk about a couple of things like different seeds. We can, you know, I'll show you that in a second, how to do seed rotation uh, to recycle, uh, to rebalance your hormones. But if you're adding that fuel to the fire, it's always going to be very hard to move forward. So that's the first, really the first thing. Anti-inflammatory so diet. Just a quick question on that. So um, I, I know that it's important to figure out what, like we're all different, obviously. And so there's some people that are allergic to gluten, some people it does nothing to them. So yeah. well, does it do nothing to them or do they just have less of a reaction? Are these things something that are all inflammatory, but that some people it works with them and some people not, or are some people just completely fine with dairy and completely fine with gluten? Because yeah. I always wonder about, how do you check this, you know? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, the best way to know is to do a full elimination diet when you cut out all these foods, right? Uh, don't do those IgG tests, food sensitivity tests or allergy tests because they don't, they are so inaccurate. And, um, and a lot of times you, you, they, they show a lot of um, um, a positive, um, positive negatives, right? So meaning that it's showing that it's a negative, but it's actually not a problem. So okay. just do the elimination diet when you cut out those foods and then after stick to the diet for like three to four weeks. Uh, some people start feeling so amazing. They'll go on for weeks longer because they just, they, they're just afraid to bring those foods back in. And then when you bring them in to answer your question, your body will tell you, mm -hmm. you know, you bring in that piece of sandwich, right? That piece of gluten and you're feeling tired. You put on weight right away. Uh, some I've had clients, for example, who, you know, within like just testing gluten, she would put on five pounds overnight just mm -hmm. from water retention and inflammation alone. Bring on a dairy, you know, um, three days later, right? And, um, and, and again, not all dairy is the same. You know, craft, crappy craft cheese is gonna be very different uh, from, um, you know, from a goat cheese that came from Sardinia, for example, you know, or came from Portland or whatever you are. Try to do local food as much as you can, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very different product altogether. So. You've got to figure that out. And so that's the best way to do it. And I do talk about in my cookbook, how to do the full elimination diet. And you're right that some people, 
can tolerate a little bit of dairy. Others are severely um, allergic. And, and everyone responds a little bit differently. You know, I used to work for with a woman who was one of the top executives in one of the tech companies that we all know in uh, Silicon Valley. And just to give you an example how severe it can be, she was vegan. So, and for religious purposes, there was no, no way for her to get protein from anywhere else than, than dairy. And what happened was she was just married for a year and her husband was gonna uh, file in for divorce because he could not take her rage and anxiety and mm -hmm. just her behavior. Mm -hmm. And her team were demoting, they were gonna demote her because her team reviewed her so badly as being abusive, emotionally and, and, and verbally mm -hmm. abusive towards them. Yeah. And so when she came to me, she's like, I need to, like, I don't know what's going on. This is my last resort. And, you know, we have to remove dairy. And so she started relying on other forms of protein. And guess what? The minute she, she started getting so much better, her mood completely stabilized. She became the sweet person she forgot that she once was. Mm. And the minute she brought the dairy back into, we call it a challenge phase, right? You challenge your body with that food. She became a, became a monster again. And that was clear mm. that dairy was her. So, you know, but other people, like, I can have a little bit here and there. And I just came from Italy. I had a, quite a bit of it. If I do too much, I get constipated. A very common problem with dairy. Mm -hmm. You know, but just to, like, so, so you, that's the way to figure it out. And, and, like they, and it's not just about, you know, being anti-inflammatory, but just to give you an example, furthermore, about the dairy part, um, you know, most African-Americans, for example, do not have the enzyme to break down a lactose, which is a sugar, right? And, you know, and so are a lot of the Chinese, for example, a lot of Asians, um, especially specifically the Korean, Japanese, Chinese do not have. And yet, you know, there's like this big push for dairy. So now a lot of people are having beginning to have allergy problems and which they had never, you know, they never experienced before. Mm. Uh, dairy can make you super constipated. So how does constipation play into hormonal balance? Well, guess what? When your body produces hormones and then they get into the cells and they do the work, so you have beautiful hair and you know vibrant skin and you've got good energy and your mind is sharp, right? Um, and your weight is where it should be because that's the thyroid. The thyroid converts fat to energy, right? All of that is functioning so well, right? Well, guess what? What happens is um, when the hormones do their work, then they get back into the bloodstream when they're done. And then in the liver, they get separated out from the dirty, from the clean ones. And the dirty ones, we poop them out. Mm -hmm. We poop out our hormones. People don't realize that. Mm. So when somebody's constipated, for example, because of dairy or because of magnesium deficiency or whatever it might be, you constipate it, meaning that you do not go at least once a day, like mm -hmm. having a really good bowel movement, like feeling empty and happy, a light, right? Mm -hmm. Then these hormones re-enter uh, your bloodstream. And then that's when they start causing a lot of the havoc that mm. we have so many women dealing with. So, yeah, so eliminating food is one big thing. The, the, then you ask, you know, what can you bring in? It kind of depends on what hormonal imbalance we're dealing with. But mm. high, highly nutritional foods are always super beneficial. So one of my favorites are, for example, cruciferous vegetables. So those are the veggies like kale and cab all the cabbages. And my personal favorite is arugula or, you know, Mizuna, right? Um, these, um, these veggies are huge support for the liver and they contain mm. substances that help us clear hormones. Um, so mm -hmm. just having like two cups of those, whether it's in a raw form or cooked form, right? Just gives you like this incredible support for your hormones right away. I am, um, I, cause you know, it's, it's dramatically changing diet. I mean, and I think is is can be challenging for people and, I find that every morning I freeze a bunch of um, fruit and vegetables like kale and stuff like that. So it doesn't go bad. Chop up bananas, put them, freeze them and just whatever I can, nuts, avocados, whatever, and put it in a smoothie with rice milk, almond milk, not um, not milk milk. And um, it's just like a nutrient boost every day. So even if you're like, you know, oh, I don't want to steam vegetables or do whatever, you can still give yourself a, a, a hit of yummy nutrition in the morning. And I find that having that um, fills me up more than if I have um, like bread or cereal or another breakfast. Like if I have a regular breakfast, I'm normally hungry again by midday. And this keeps me going to like two, three. So yeah, anyway. I, I'm so happy you you bring this up. So you know, you you are a world traveler, right? And mm -hmm. two, and so one of the things if you note, um, like you, you know, I know you were in Japan long, long ago, right? 
like when you go to Japan or whether you go to Peru, Ethiopia, India, Turkey, people don't eat sweet stuff for breakfast ever. It's always savory. And there's a reason for that is, and that is, so, you know, breakfast, having really good breakfast, like what you're describing nutritionally um, being rich, but also a breakfast that's not full of sugar. So like, I don't mind if it's just a little bit of a banana, but if it's like a banana and a mango and a pineapple, that's a sugar bomb. Mm. And it's gonna set you up for the total disaster. And like you were saying about like, when you have a conventional breakfast, right? Like an oatmeal with dried fruit and maple syrup, that's all carbohydrates and sugar. And then two hours later, you're gonna start feeling shaky because your blood sugar level drops. And guess what? Blood sugar level drop is insulin. And that's all, it's all messes up with your other hormones. Instead, one of the big, I'm a big proponent of what I call a PFF kind of breakfast, protein, fat, and fiber kind mm -hmm. of a breakfast. And so that's a breakfast that's full of, as the name implies, full of, full of protein. Uh, you can get that from nuts and seeds, right? Um, if somebody's not a vegetarian, like having a piece of, you know, even meat from the night before, a piece of salmon, a uh, piece of, a, um, you know, chicken, whatever. Um, and then huge, veg, you know, huge bowl of veggies, right, as a, as a base but also fiber. So, you know, one of the great things about getting fiber would also be from seeds. Flaxseed is one of the super foods for hormones. I can talk about this in a second. Mm -hmm. We just ground it up and put it a little bit on that. And let's not forget the fats, you know, it's when you don't put fat in, it doesn't make you feel full. And that's when two hours later we go, oh, I'm hungry again. Why do I have, why am I so weak to say no to this damn muffin? you know, and, and then, and, or a piece of co a cup of coffee. And it's not because you are weak. It's just that your body has had a sugar drop and you need something to pick it back again. And you're going on this roller coaster. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes us so dependent on sugar and stuff like that. So having a really good breakfast that sets you up for hormonal balance, like, like a magic. Brilliant um now talk like so back to um Kajia's comment because she was well she also mentioned that she did a an allergy test um and it said that her body had reacted to everything and so uh, she thought that seemed quite inaccurate yeah um, but back to her so and, and so maybe this can tie in with the the seeds that you were talking about um her concern was for painful periods fi fibroids and, and hair loss hello um, yeah yeah what would be your advice on that and uh, we'd love to hear about the flax seeds yeah, so let me just address first the allergy test is, um, there's a difference between allergies and food intolerance. It's a very big, very big difference. Allergy is something that like, you know, you have a piece of nut or a piece of shellfish, right? And you swell up, you start getting itchy. And that typically happens within three seconds to 30 seconds, 30 minutes later. And you know pretty quickly what it is, right? Because it's so easy, it's, your body responds quickly. Food intolerance is a different part of the immune system it's not IgA, it's IgG, it's a different part of your immune system that responds. And that tends to be a delayed reaction, anything between 30, 30 minutes to three days later. And that's the hard part, right? You know, look, if you're having a dairy problem, a lot of people have a piece of dairy, it's not gonna affect you right away, but tomorrow you're gonna be constipated, right? I can do eggs today, but tomorrow I'm gonna have like three zits popping out, right, from eggs. Mm -hmm. So it's a delayed reaction. So whenever you test, um, don't work with an allergist and allergies only believes that allergies is, is an answer to everything. They don't do IgG testing. Um, but really, I think the most foolproof thing is just to do the elimination diet that I described and then reintroduce foods and your body will tell you what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, let's talk about the seed rotation. And by the way, in case somebody's driving and you're not able to write this down, um, it's, it's actually on my website. So if you go to hormonesbalance.com, there's a, an enter search for seed rotation. Uh, we have the guide available for you so you can download it from there. So the whole idea, you know, is to, so the seed rotation, first of all, helps women who have PMSs, fibroids, endometriosis, if you're lacking periods. Um, actually, if you want the actual URL, I can give it to you. It's hormonesbalance.com slash seat dash rotation. That's the right. actual, yeah. See, like I'm, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be clever, guys, and I put the comment in the wrong place. So now it's like stuck on the screen. I've got it wrong and I don't know how to remove it. Okay, okay, hide. Yeah, sorry, you talk. I'll do okay, it. you talk, you, and yeah. I talk I and you. I got you guys, I got you. Just ignore my comments on the screen. I'll You're figure correct. out this little platform soon, don't you worry. Sounds good. You're yeah. a fixer. Um, <laughs> So, so, yeah, so seed rotation can really help a lot. Like if your periods are super heavy, if your periods are irregular, if you don't get your periods, if your periods are all over the place, they can help a lot. If you have terrible PMSs, this is going to help. Like I said, fibroids, endometriosis, all of that is great. 
And for women who are also a little bit older, like if you're going through hot flashes and night sweats, that can also help a whole bunch. The whole idea of seed rotation is that if you take your cycle, um, if you're when you're menstruating, right? So this is this is your full cycle. Let's just say it's a, let's base it on 28 days. Day one is your first day of your period. So imagine like this is a cycle, a circle, right? From day one to day 14, you want to do seeds that promote boost of estrogen in your body, and that's important because that's what you're you're going to have a really good. You're going to ovulate um, and have a good. Um, you know, that's what gives you beautiful skin and hair and all that is estrogen, right? So the way to boost this is doing two seeds. And what I'm holding up here is one is a flax seed. You can see I'm, I'm keeping it whole. It's not pre-ground and I'll talk about it in a second. And the other one is very simply, it's pumpkin seeds. I'm using, these ones are sprouted ones, sprouted and dehydrated. So a combination of these two, all you need to do is just do one tablespoon of each that's freshly ground um, every day, right? It's very simple. Put it into your smoothie, like the way Ioni likes to do it. You can put it on top of salads, uh, edit, just have it with a glass of water. It doesn't really matter. And why freshly ground over just eating them like they are? Yeah. So the reason why is because they're the active substance that really helps, especially that is true, especially true. So for uh, flaxseed, flaxseed contains what's called phytoestrogens, naturally occurring estrogens. They are very gentle estrogens. They're not going to you know, they're not going to give you estrogen dominance. Like, it's not going to worsen your symptoms. They're actually going to help. Mm -hmm. um, and it contains something called lignans. And lignans are the substance that get fresh, gets released when it's freshly ground. The reason why you don't know what you don't want to buy flexi that's pre-ground, like also known as flex meal, is because that stuff, you know, it gets oxidized really quickly. Mm -hmm. You know how you go to a store and you find flaxseed oil always in a dark bottle in a refrigerator? Mm -hmm. because flax gets oxidized really quickly and then it becomes actually quite toxic. So mm. that's why you want to freshly grind it. Um, and then uh, pumpkin seeds are con are contain um, high amounts of uh, vitamin E. So it's also super helpful for, for estrogen. So that's what you do for the first 14 days and helps you to boost your estrogen. And then when you reach day 14, then from day 15 until you start your period again, then you're going to switch to another set of seeds. And that is sesame seeds that I'm running low on right now, mm -hmm. and of, of sunflower seeds, okay? Mm -hmm. It's the same concept, one tablespoon ground, freshly ground of each, putting it into food. And I have to tell you, Ioni, when I first, um, I learned this method first because I had this woman who I was working with, I don't do private coaching anymore, but when I was in private practice back then, it was this girl I was working with and she had 20 days out of 30, she had a period, heavy. Wow. You're talking about blotches like, you know, blotches of blood coming out of her, right? Jeez. And she she did not want to go on birth control pills, rightly so. Um, but she, and she was desperate. She's like, I'm gonna give this another one or two months, and I cannot sustain it. Needless to say, she was low on vitamin B12. She was low on um, iron, right? And nothing was able to help her. So um, I remember my colleague naturopath said to me, "Have you tried seed rotation with her?" And I thought, when she explained, and I thought, how on earth? These little silly seeds are gonna fix this woman who is in such tremendous pain for 20 days out of out of a month. Mm. And but you know what? She was game, and I and I put her on it, and she used it like medicine, right? And long and behold, after one month, she came back. She says, "You know what? This is the first time my period is now down to 12 days." Mm. And then after three months, we managed to get it down to like normal, you know, normal um, um, five days. And she started ovulating for the first time, and. You know, it was just profoundly changing. Wow. And the other thing that I found with also with seed rotation is that um, even if like if you're going through, you're beginning to go into like perimenopause, like I'm entering that phase now and periods are becoming a little bit more irregular, shorter, um, then this can also help a whole bunch. I've had women who had hot flashes and, um, and uh, night sweats who swear by this because it mm -hmm. helps them as well. So just a really, just a really good example. Like, so let me just also like for those of you who are a little bit more, uh, you know, maybe biochemistry curious. Like, I just want to give you a quick update on this. Um, you know, both of these seeds contain both zinc and vitamin E and A, and mm -hmm. all of those those are like the key nutrients for progesterone production. That's what happens when you. That's when your body starts producing more its natural progesterone is because of the nutrients you're giving it. And sure, you can do a supplement, but I have found that. The, the body never absorbs nutrients as well as it does from food, you know? Mm -hmm. So isn't this yeah. so simple just to do something like that? And it's like, it can change your life. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I, you've got me so curious. I don't know that I have that many problems with periods, to be honest. Mine are always pretty decent. Um, I was on birth control for like the longest time. And then when I came off it, my skin, I just had the worst acne for like eight months. And it was so difficult because I was like, you know, selling skincare at the time and as an actor. And it was just like horrendous and nothing I did would work. And eventually all the whatever from the the pill had got out my system and my skin is back to normal. But um, I'm very curious to try the seed rotation thing. And uh, Magdalena is also kindly, she's giving away two copies of her book. Um, do you have it there to yes, show Yes, I us? do, yeah. Um, well, that's the book. Yeah. Cooking for Hormone Balance, which I think is fantastic. So we're giving away two copies of that. Um, I've got it. I've got the sign up link in the comments below here, but I'll also update. Um, it'll be in all the show descriptions. So um, make sure that you um, tell uh, write in about that. The book is also available for sale now, right? It's on Amazon now. You have oh, released. absolutely, yeah. It's in Barnes and Nobles as well, and yeah. Yeah, and she kindly offered to um, give away some of these seeds for seed rotation so that you can try it. I'm definitely wanting to give it um, a, a go now. So um, yes, to the lovely lady that commented before, please uh, sign up for that because it might be a great opportunity for you to try these out. Um, now, I'm going to start wrapping it up. This has been so insightful and just I, I think it's just information that we don't know, but it's so important to know what our body needs and, and like how because it's it's so clever. And then we just put things in the irritate and then offset the balance. And then we wonder why we get sick. And it's like, well, stop making it work hard, you know, just like give us what we need. Um, but this week is suicide prevention week and a big emphasis. And one of the reasons behind uplifting content is because I struggled on and off with depression a lot. Um, and interestingly, when you began this conversation, you told me that you suffered from severe anxiety and you weren't sure where it was coming from. I would love for you um, just to share some tips and advice on um, hormone balancing and what we're eating to help sort of regain mental health um, and help people that are in that, that type of space. Yeah, great. So that's a really nice way of um, bringing it back to what you said originally, right? Um, you know, so depression, um, I mean, look, nobody wants to, you know, commit suicide unless they are severely depressed, right? And, you know, and, and there are certain biochemical change that happens in the brain that we come to that point of feeling this way. And Western, as you know, Western medicine's answer to this is, um, is put us, putting us on antidepressants. And the truth is when you suppress one emotion called sadness, you also suppress everything else from sexual drive to having joy in life and having drive and accomplishing amazing things, right? So the, there are a couple of hormonal imbalances that can actually cause anxiety and depression. And um, thyroid is infamous for that. So low thyroid function. Um, and I know many of you, many of the listeners are probably saying, oh yeah, my doc tested thyroid and it came back. Um, there was nothing wrong with it. I really strongly encourage you to either get the book um, and take the quiz or just go to my website, take the quiz to, to, and the symptoms will tell you if you have a thyroid problem or not. I, we don't have time today to go into details why the diagnostics for thyroid are so, you know, they're actually kind of criminal. Um, I, I, I hope that you know, t like five to 10 years from now, the endocrinology profession gets um, seriously reevaluated and maybe some people get prosecuted for not allowing to really look at the numbers we should be looking at for thyroid. Because I cannot tell you how many women fly under the radar are told that their depression, the fact they are losing hair, the fact they are putting on weight unreasonably, the fact that they are losing babies, miscarriages in the first trimester are most often due to thyroid problems. And they are told that there's nothing wrong with that. And that drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. But if you do some research on your own and find out that, so thyroid is one thing. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is blood sugar control. You know, when we, especially when you're talking about like things like anxiety, having unrational fears that you just have no reason to be worried about things in your life, you suddenly are. But the things that thing happened in the past, they were okay. And then suddenly the same thing's triggering you now. Blood sugar control a lot of the time. So this hypoglycemic responses is another one, right? That can be, that can be definitely looked at. Um, estrogen dominance is another cause when you got too much of those bad estrogens um, unbalanced can be also caused for depression and anxiety in some women, right? That's why we have PMSs. I mean, you know, when we have PMSs, we are not the most rational selves for a lot of women, right? And it's whether it's some women is anger, so some women is just being really closed down. Some women are just, um, you know, I just all they want to do is just sleep. So that is that is hormonal. Um, so you know, yeah. So there's a lot of things that we can do, and it's hard for me to talk about it just like boom, boom. That you know, there is no three foods that's gonna fix it all. It all depends on which hormonal problem you have, 
And that's why I wrote, you know, this is a 400 page book um, that I wrote. It's not just recipes, but the first part of the book really sets the context of what's going on with your hormones. Figure out which hormonal imbalance you have and then follow a protocol because every, every hormonal imbalance in the book has a protocol. So if you have a thyroid, this is what you do. If you have estrogen right. issues, this is what you do, right? But find out first what's the cause of your um, of the depression. And just to mention one more thing, it can be hormonal, but it can also be due to some deficiencies of food intolerances. I, only, I cannot tell you how many women I have gotten off gluten or sugar or caffeine for that matter. And, you know, and, and not just getting them off, but like introducing a lot of amazing other foods that are nourishing and they never feel deprived. And that's the whole idea of, you know, of this book was that to, if I take away three foods from you, I wanna show you another 30 that you can start playing around with. Most of them, you you know, you don't ever try it because it's just not your, you know, your MO, right? Your daily MO. Um, and so, so the vitamin B12 deficiency, vitamin D3 deficiency can be a cause. Food intolerance is gluten is a big one on depression. Sugar is another one. So there's, there's a lot that we can do uh, to prevent it. And, you know, yeah. I just running on to that. I also remember um, a girlfriend was severely depressed for a really long time and she didn't know what it was. And she'd had the um, the implant put in, which is just mm. hormones going into her. And I know a lot of other friends that have put on weight or have felt depressed with their birth control. Yes. So um, depression is such a um, it's it's such a big factorial yeah. factors that could be many yeah. different things that are going on. And, and sometimes that that people might not think oh that that's that birth control it's that pill or it's this thing that i'm eating and so i would say this is really fantastic advice just to and, have and, you know you mentioned birth control pills right birth control is actually synthetic form of estrogen and progesterone and you know i talked about estrogen dominance being one of the causes of depression well when you have an implant or whether you take it orally you're giving yourself these access of synthetic estrogen that was not meant to be in our body. That's not what your body is producing. There is no bioidentical birth control pills, by the way, right? And mm -hmm. really any woman who takes care of herself should get off birth control pills. I, I mean, there are books, my, my friend just released, is releasing a book called um, Ditch the Pill, Jolene Brighton, you might check her out if period is your, is your thing, uh, birth control is your thing. Um, you know, it's such an important piece of work. And she talks about, I mean, she goes into the science that, you know, every time she talks about it, I'm like, oh my God, I just cannot believe it, including science studies that show in 1970s already, like for example, how monkeys behave with each other, uh, including like how we choose the wrong partners and how we become suicidal. And um, I mean, just a whole host of issues, not to mention that you're robbing yourself of nutrients and minerals when being on birth control pills. So, mm -hmm. you know, ditch it as quickly as you can. And you're right that those synthetic hormones are just- Yeah, wow. Thank you so much for this. I think there's just a lot of food for thought. And I think it's really, nah, but I'm ching. I didn't even mean that. Um, but I think, again, it's just that bit, that reminder that we're all so different and we're all reacting in different ways. And so um, listen to your body and uh, see, uh, sort of take care of you. Um, because, you know, everything you've just spoken about, all these different infinite things that can be going on with people and, and everyone's so individual. And so just being mindful of that and, and doing these um, um sort of uh, food, what do you call them again? Food blah, 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 avoidance tests? Um, elimination diet elimination or food intolerance diet. test. Yeah. Yeah. And just being aware of the, the sort of the hormones and the things that you're taking for you um, and see how that has an impact. But Magdalena, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Tell us uh, more about where we can just um, find out what you've got going on or the, definitely the book, which we'll put a link to in the, in the show notes. Um, where can we find out more about you? Yeah, my website is hormones with an S, hormonesbalance.com. Um, that's really, that's where I live. And, you know, we are on Instagram, on Facebook, but really I think that the Facebook is, get the seed rotation. I think this is a really great starting point. Uh, the whole guide is there. You can just download it and um, get started with a simple thing like that. Excellent. I put a link to that in the comments and I'll update the show notes with that specific thing too. This has been super, super insightful and educational and brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. And everyone, I will see you back tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.